الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم بعد we express our praise and gratitude to Allah Ta'ala we seek blessings on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so we've been looking at ayahs on divorce and the recurring theme is that you should act bil ma'roof you should act with righteousness with uh, uh, proper conduct in a hot issue, a touchy issue. But if you can't do that, then Allah Ta'ala gives the laws. So the point is that you should be as amicable as possible. <coughs> but if you can't, then here are the laws to follow. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ كَذَلِكَ Just like this, يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Allah Ta'ala makes clear for you آيَاتِهِ His ayahs لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ So that you may use your intellect. And so what is a, uh, an additional point here? That, that the process of resolving conflict when possible, should uh, not have to resort to Quranic prescriptions. That when you are resolving conflict, your Quran is your fallback. But should you not be able to resolve your conflicts, then you gotta go to Quran and Sunnah and such. Otherwise, your Quran is giving you your outward boundaries. Right. Stay within these boundaries if you find that the conflict resolution is, is how you how do you fix the situation. So that leads now to the bigger issue of conflict and conflict resolution. We're going back to the issue of battle. Alam tara ila ladina haraju min diarihim. So, do you not know, or did you not consider, did you not see the ones who left their homes? They were in the thousands, but they were full, they were full of fear of death. And Allah said to them, Mutu, die. And then they came to life, or then He made them come to life. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَذُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ And Allah is full of bounty to people, but most people do not show gratitude. So here we're speaking about the children of Israel. And one of the understandings of the children of Israel is when they wanted to go see Allah. So remember way back, this is around Ayah 54, here we take one. Wait, we can actually just look. Fifty-five. <clears throat> I said, O oh, Moses, we will not believe in you until we see Allah outright, Jaharathan. And so then they were hit with a lightning bolt. And so what was the formula? That this is more in the Bible than the Quran. They want to see Allah, and they were told, you have to go up to this mountain to see Allah. And they come to this cliff, and then they all get hit by lightning. And then they're <clears throat> killed, and then they're brought back to life. So what did they see? They didn't actually see Allah, but they saw how easy and powerful Allah's might is. So the point is, they were told to die, and then he brought them back to life. But the problem, which was summarizing the whole issue of the children of Israel, was the lack of gratitude. Most of humanity does not show gratitude. So now that is setting the stage for these ayahs. <coughs> وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Fight in the cause of Allah and know that Allah is hearing knowing. So this brings us to the fundraising ayah. And look at the context of the fundraising ayah. 
Who will give Allah a good loan? Qardan Hasana. So he may multiply for him many times over. And Allah is the one who withholds and grants abundance into him you'll be returned. Yabsutu wa ilayhi turja'oon. So what is this loan that you'd be giving to Allah? You'd be giving your life. That's the goodly loan to give to Allah. Oh, you're talking about um, just going to fight for the cause of Allah. Exactly. Can I have a question? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> In one of my like footnotes, for, for, for two, for, I 244, it says, after dealing with marital issues, the ground returns to the question of fighting back. So, like, what's the wisdom for that? Is there any... Well, I think all of these are addressing issues of conflict in character in conflict. Right. I mean, more than that, this these whole the last remaining sections of the Quran are now addressing like the final big social issues. So estate, marriage divorce, uh, war, charity and loans. Yeah, those are all like the uh, big social interaction issues that we have to face. So but, you're saying that I mean you're attrib- I mean I guess that's the sort of in other words, can this be taken more generally, or is it a cost yeah. to... Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. You can absolutely take it to mean, you know, the way we commonly mean part of the hasana, which is like an interest-free loan. Mm-hmm. Um, um, the key thing that I want to point out is that it's in the context, however, of eyes and fighting. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're raising hand? So, this brings us to the story of Talut. Alam tara. So alam tara is kind of like wa idha. So wa idha or wa is is and when. The literal meaning of alam tara is did you not see? Okay. That's literally what it means. So the in meaning it means did you not consider? Okay. So al mala min bani Israel min ba'd Musa if qalu li nabiyyi li nabiyyin lahum Ab'ath lana malikan. So, after Musa alayhi salam, the children of Israel said to their prophet at the time, okay, <clears throat> essentially, we need a king. If you give us a king, we're going to fight in the way of Allah. Now, the point to think about in this story is this is a population of people that's, that's refusing to fight. Yeah. Why are they refusing to fight? They're afraid. Yeah. Now, if you generalize this, what is the issue here? The question becomes, what's preventing me from becoming more active in my service to Allah? So go back to the point of the Guru loan. Me, in terms of giving my life, doesn't necessarily mean I'm dying, but giving my time in service to Allah. What is it that's preventing me? And so often one excuse is, okay, just give me the leader. Okay, I need someone, you know, that charismatic leader who I can follow. That's essentially what they're saying here. We need a king, and if you give us a king, then we will definitely fight in the way of Allah. And then the response to that, قَالَ هَلْ عَسَيْتُمْ إِنْ كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ الْقِتَالِ So would you disobey, would you disobey if it was prescribed for you to fight? Then they say, so if it was prescribed for you to, 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 to fight. They say, why would we not fight okay, in the way of Allah? Considering we've been driven out of our homes, you know, as well as our children, and from our children. But then what happened? And so when fighting was prescribed upon them, they turned their backs, illa qalila minhum. All of them except for a few of them. Wallahu alimun bithalimeen, and Allah knows the oppressors. So the point is that, okay, just give me this, I just need this key, and then I'll go fight. Okay, I'll go serve. And the point is that, what you're saying, if, uh, the challenge to them is that, okay, so if that king didn't appear, does that mean you're going to disobey? Okay. And so the response is, no, of course not. Why wouldn't we fight? Well, what happened is they received a command, and they disobeyed. Okay. Then they received a king. Act 47. 
So the Prophet said to them, Allah has raised for you Talut. The name Talut is Paul. Now, this is not St. Paul. I'm just letting you know, Talut. If you ever meet anybody named Paul, just tell them, oh, your name is Talut. Right. Where is he? Where's Suleiman? Oh, right there, okay. It's like I hear Suleiman's voice, but I don't see him. Yeah. And then what do they say? Okay, how can he have kingship over us? And what was the issue? وَلَمْ يُؤْتَ سَعَةً مِنَ He hasn't been given up very much, not even sa of, of wealth. So it's in the nature of society that we tend to give respect to those of material means. So you have a blue collar worker, white collar worker, by and large you're going to give more respect to the white collar worker. And within the, st the, the classes of white collar worker, just instinctively in society you're going to give attention to the people who are higher up in the food chain. That's human nature, right? And so they asked for a king. First, they said, of course, we're going to follow the command, but they didn't follow the command. And they wanted a king. That was their excuse. So here's a king, but no, no, we don't want this king. Right. He's not, he's not as, as blessed as us in terms of wealth. And the answer is, in Allah hastafahu, Allah has chosen him, alaykum, over you. Wazadahu. Bastata, basta. We can never do ta in ta. Bastatan fil ilm wal jism. So Allah Taala has made him higher than you in terms of knowledge and stature, physical stature. Yeah. And so Allah Taala is the one who gives sovereignty to whom He wills. Wallahu wasiyun adim. So, and what is the point here? What is it that takes a population of people to act? And it's very hard to get a population of people to act. So it's not necessarily the charismatic figure. That's what they're given, and or, um, and that's going to work. Prior to that, they're given in a command, and that wasn't enough. And this goes back to you know, uh, uh, I, I keep making points about social change, massive social change. I don't think theology is strong enough to 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 get people to go through massive social change. So ISIS has been around for ten years. I'm very skeptical that, that theology is a major part of ISIS's outlook. Just for the simple reason that I don't think ISIS, that theology can sustain a population for too long. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just, but yeah. to, to bring up the question that, you know, when you're faced, when you're, because we're, we're in a position where we're, we're having to counter some thoughts that have crept into our youth. Yeah. And the, the counter argument that they can make to you based on a, re, a reading of this versus to say, Oh, you're just you're just you're just wed to an action. Yeah, sure. And so you know, I I want to do something. You just want to do nothing. You're mm -hmm. like you're like the people waiting for something. So how do you how do you carry on that discussion further with them? I mean, um, I mean, I try to like spend all my time in action, right? Right. I mean, it's not to sound self righteous or anything. Right. Uh, I'm just not holding a gun. You know? Right. Um, I mean, so there's a couple ways to respond. Uh, one is to look at all the instructions, even in the surah. Mm -hmm. And if I'm picking and choosing, then I'm no different than the person who's fighting, um, uh, but ignoring all the other commands, right? If I'm picking only the peaceful ayahs and skipping the, the, the arms-oriented ayahs, then I'm no different than the person who's picking the arms-oriented ayahs and skipping the peaceful ayahs, right? Then you gotta, you gotta take the whole package. And for a lot of young people, that still doesn't work. Because right. uh, I've had those conversations, you know, this exact question. The Quran says very clearly, fight them. So why shouldn't we fight them? And then my response is, well, um, what about all the other ayahs? Right? So in a time where I had literally that meeting, one of the only persons who listened was Basit, and who you guys know from MLA. Right? You know, um, um, for him, it was like, whoa. Yeah, you're right, right. But for a bunch of other guys in the room, their view is no, we have to go fight, right? Even if I was to prove it wrong, no, we have to go fight. And so there isn't much that can be said to such a person who's kind of locked in their, their opinion. So what I'm saying is that <clears throat> I should say there isn't much to be said from a rational level. So they're going to use other levels, other approaches. What do you think? 
That's no, I, I, I think that's kind of I guess where we're where we're stuck, and I don't know. Um, I don't know in terms of, in other words, we do we have to kind of construct an activist beside you know, in other words, we have to re con construct a route of activism which is not destructive. Yeah, I think we do have to do that. I think there was a lot more activism, activism in our community uh, pre-9-11. There was a lot more idealism, a lot more activism. I think a lot of that's gone. Yeah, I, th that's, that is, you know, me and Ashina were talking about that the other day. It's like we used to, you know, people used to go abroad to study. People used to mm -hmm. do things and, you know, people used to think of Islam as a means of social, you know, yeah. social change. People used to think that Islam was, you know, people used to hold to, for example, Malcolm X's ideal that Islam could save America from yeah. racism, that actually meant something to people. Yeah. We've lost that, it and it's up. very hard to, because you're, we're scared, essentially, of it. Now, I don't know how, but construct, reconstructing those idealisms so that we could actually have something positive to offer mm -hmm. rather than something saying, well, this is, you don't want to do this, mm -hmm. that's that's where the struggle is. I'm not sure where the, where the, where the struggle is real. Yeah. We were talking about that, like how, so many like uh, people are aged in that college sort of graduate school age where you could spend a year abroad or three years abroad yeah. studying come back and it's like now if you do that you're worried about in training yeah. <laughs> like you know, like a terrorist yeah and I mean I mean we spent yesterday we met uh, uh, Sam again yeah yeah so it's just, it's just Sam during a we were at a gathering at Selman's house, uh, and so a friend of ours, a mutual friend, and he said, you know, he, he and last year medical school, he took three years off before yeah. he finished medical school, and the idea of somebody doing that now, yeah. nobody could get away with doing something like that now, at least mm -hmm. without, you know, without the, uh, you know, without people really having thoughts about what's what's he, what this guy up to, yeah. or what Hamza Yusuf did, even that that would be something that. People would, you know, would really have some serious thoughts about what people, mm -hmm. you know, what's, what's this guy up to right now. Mm -hmm. So, what are you raising? What did you mean when you said um, theology can't sustain a population? I think uh, social change happens more often uh, based on material motivations, hunger, possibility for wealth. I think for a mass population, I don't think theology lasts that very long. Do you think that that doesn't motivate people? I think it can in the short term. Right. Because even look at the best of all generations, so the Sahaba male be pleased with them. Even not including the fighting among them, that period only lasted 30 years. Right. Then on top of that, there was fighting that took place uh, among the Sahaba. You had the Battle of Safin between Ali and Muawiyah, you had the Battle of the Kings between Ali and Aisha, male will be pleased with them all. Um, and I'm saying, okay, the best of generation theology lasted 30 years. Right. And that was a generation founded on the theology, right? They had the prophet beast upon them among them. Um, and so my suggestion is that theology mixed with material forces can work, but it's material forces that are at the heart of massive social change. That's, that's purely my opinion. And, uh, so like, if we were to have a utopian Islamic state, uh, I don't think it would last that long anyway, in terms of its full uh, ideal practice I think it's interesting the activism point because I was thinking about and I was like, no, there's a lot of activism. But then I realized what you were like if the definition of activism. I think like I guess our college age, whatever, yeah. we see a lot more of humanitarianism, I guess, uh -huh. humanitarian stuff. Yeah. I think that's probably reactionary movement with post nine eleven movements. Yeah, I think I think a lot of that is individual projects, right? So Loyal is gonna have FASAFON tomorrow. Right? So every MSA has FASAFON for hunger, right? Mm -hmm. But it's once a year. As opposed to people really dedicating themselves to, to uh, uh, causing change in society, improvement in society. I think uh, you know where we used to see. I, I don't know what we, I used. I think in college, we used to see Islam as a solution to yeah. the problems. Whereas now, I think we see it's more where Muslims can be part of the solution, yeah. but not necessarily that Islam. Uh, uh, Islam is a solution. I think. And that's a pre-9-11, post-9-11 phenomenon, as far as I'm concerned. I think, I think half of it is pre-9-11, post-9-11, and half of it is that our generation is now 10 years older anyway. And I think but, we, the, but the college kids aren't growing up with that. College kids don't have anything of that. 
back when we yeah, were your yeah, age. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm not saying no. I'm not, they're doing a lot of things. It's yeah. just not. It's the idea. Yes. The idea. We, they're sh we're, we're we're almost steering them away from that. You know, mm -hmm. don't, don't. I think that's very true. Don't steering them away from what? The from the idea that you can think of Islam. Uh, yeah, is, Islam is. You know, in other words. Islam can be the solution to these problems. If we bring if, if we bring Islam to the people, Islam can be the solution to the problems. Whereas the switch from the previous generation, I think. Yeah, at least, right. I, think, yeah. I mean, if I think about it a little bit, and like the I said, the rhetoric is different. Now. The rhetoric we yeah. used to think that, like I said, well, we used to hold that. You know, Malcolm X saying that if Islam, if America would only, you know, yeah. if, 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 if America really needs to understand Islam because. It can get rid of the racism problem. Yeah. We used to, and we used to think that uh, that was sort of the way to bring things about. Then we like we're kind of. Like, isn't that the, like the crux of the religion, though? If you have Islam, then it kind of gets rid of all the problems. I, I mean, I think we hold that ideal, but I know what you're talking about that we don't. Spread we don't it advertise it anymore. As Let's, much. Just a, yeah. Let's just put it that way. I think that. I mean, because like you know, like especially when people blame like the state of Muslim on like America or the West or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like completely our fault, I would say. Like if we just I think practice Islam like we should, I don't think Muslims would be in the state at all. Like I mean, I don't think so. But I mean I get what you're saying about that shift. We don't really think about it that as much. I don't remember what you I think I think that like that's the feeling of like younger people, but then you get older and you realize that like I mean, I think that's what we what we're trying to say is that, I mean, no matter what, I mean, Islam is Islam, but people are people, and it's like we strive for better, and like we hold on to this utopian ideal. It's really not the point. Although I think I think that the younger generation are actually doing more like more it's actual projects, true. True. like the actual projects that can, you know that are been, they're actually doing more. You know, in terms of the things, the humanitarian efforts that you mentioned, yeah. I think there's actually more being done by Muslims. As Muslims, in other words, in other words, you could just actually, you could just yeah. you could you could, you, could, you could actually just put a Christian or a Jew in that same spot, yeah. and it wouldn't be any different. Yeah, Does that make true. sense? Yeah, yeah, I get what you're that saying. That makes a lot of sense. But like, we're focused. We, we're, we're like Muslims are bringing mm -hmm. about change. We're not saying like, oh, this is from Islam. Like, this is our this is an Islamic effort. Mm -hmm. Yes, is that what you're saying? Or what does it make it? What does it make it particularly Islamic? Yeah, there's no what you're saying, right? So if you replace it by having some Christian doing the same thing, you don't have to change much except for some words. You know. mm -hmm. I think it's a it's a real thing <coughs> that uh, I think there's a, a decade long malaise in our community post 9/11 and uh, uh, a sadness in our community. Right? I mean, there is the the type of optimism we had in the 90s was 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 a Pretty neat thing. There's a whole lot of optimism about Islam, Islam in America, and all these things, right? Um, and <clears throat> it's fascinating because one of the places that embody this is Abiquiu in New Mexico. So Abiquiu in New Mexico is this. It's a place where people used to go for retreats of the uh, <laughs> Sufi <laughs> variety, <laughs> Sufi variety. But like everybody would go there for like like retreats and stuff. And I had never been there. Connect to the earth. Sorry? Connect to the earth. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's... Mother tree. It, it's literally like in the middle of the mountains, this masjid. And it's designed to look like a Pueblo type building. Really, really neat. I mean, if you, if you, if you Google it, uh, well, I can Google it. Anyway, um, but... Uh, so then I went with a couple of friends like two years ago. Now the place is abandoned. I mean, there's one guy who runs it, and... They've been steadily selling off all the land because they can't sustain it. Before it was on literally like hundreds of acres, and now it's just shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And it's like a kibbutz in Israel yeah, or something. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we went on some random day, nobody's there. Uh, the door was unlocked, so we went in and prayed and did whatever, and then just left. But you know, it, it also became just representative of what things are like now. Back then, that was like this special place. Yeah. Islam is going to grow, take over America, mm -hmm. and now. It's all in. It's, well, I, guess, I think I guess, getting, I guess that's also a testimony to what the damage that twenty people, can, twenty zealots can do. Yeah, it is. If you think about that, because we, we we felt like when we felt like 
we really, I mean, we really felt good about the role of Islam in America. We felt like we were making inroads. We felt like, mm-hmm. and that twenty zealots destroyed that for us. All gone. Yeah. And then you got ISIS destroying whatever it was rebuilt. Yeah. To bring it back, I mean, with you know, to bring it back to this verse, I mean the. I mean, are those founders and those active people still around at, at the AB, ABQ? ABQ? Yeah, because it's like, what if their king is moving on, you know? Mm-hmm. We look uh, out that driving personality, right? Yeah, I mean, the guy who runs it might have been the guy who ran it all along. And now, just to sustain himself, he makes chairs, and, and he's basically a carpenter. Yeah. I don't know if his kids are Muslim. He himself is a convert, but I don't know if his kids are Muslim. Like, my generation, I don't know, whatever. The young The Sorry. Future. <laughs> the future of the Islam in America. I just think Muslim. that a lot of them maybe have come to the conclusion that Islam in America just can't be what they want. What, like, you know, like, whatever these people want. No, you're, you're right. You're saying We've right. come to that conclusion. Yeah. That's just, like, right now we have. I just feel like that reality oh. isn't shattered or whatever. And now they're trying to make ways in other countries, you know. I think we're just more like based on made, like on our own development, like within the community sort of. Because I feel like we Selfish. are. I feel like we are pretty active in like you know all these like different uh, places where we go to get Islamic knowledge. You know, like we have all like these dogs off and dogs and everything. And, Bars. You know what I'm gonna say? So Bars. I feel like we're active in that sort of stuff, but we don't see Islam in America as something that can actually be established, can be uh, a means of bringing more people into the religion sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, guess, I guess there is a shift from the 90s that yeah. I guess we don't know about because we were... You weren't born? <laughs> we were not, yeah. No, we were alive. <laughs> don't <laughs> young. We weren't conceived. <laughs> we're mature. Parents were not even married. <laughs> 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 related or not, but um, regarding um, like how we used to be very idealistic and optimistic, and now we're just kind of scared and quiet. So I know that somewhere, I don't know where, in the Quran, there is part of a verse that says that you think you'll be called, you can call yourselves believers and not be tested. Yeah. Um, and do you think that we it would be appropriate, I don't know the context of the verse, but do you think it would be appropriate then to um, look at ourselves as, for example, the American Muslim community, where we were so optimistic, and then, bam, this thing happened that was pretty much out of our control that really kind of shook us up and made us afraid. So, I mean, the way that I look at that is, you know, whenever we claim to be something or have this image in our mind of ourselves and what we are, at least personally for me this happens, something will come along and challenge that and test it. I mean, is that something that's applicable in this case? What do you guys think? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes? Mm-hmm. That our, deal, our idealism was, was being put to the test, and it turned out it was empty? I think that's a good theory. I mean, I think it's... I just think every generation has its test of their <coughs> own faith. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's test your generation. <laughs> I don't know. It is. I, just, I don't know. Making social sure. media. Making sure, <laughs> making sure people that you know don't, you know. Do cover. Yeah. Don't do cover. Yeah. Seriously, you know, as as there was a, like a time where like a, I remember Abdul Hakim quick like kind of like talking about Andalusia a little bit and how it was such a it was such a time that basically the scholars of the time said 
just strike the wall and that's your that's your like making glam and just so that you can make you know just do whatever you can to keep that alive and how that can be maybe that's just the, the struggle that you know just the shift it, the shift happened because of it and yeah it's you know we maybe we can bemoan this lo- the loss of you know the loss of that optimism but maybe our our, our change or struggle is just different and that mm-hmm. and we may you know what we see at MLA every week we're just holding on to people just trying to get them to stay tied to the masjid maybe that's that might be a bigger struggle than when everybody's feeling great about mm-hmm. Islam and trying to you know, just kind of get, get get the word out there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's so I do think there is yeah this 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 despondency. Right. Um, uh, okay, well coming back to this ayah. Okay. So what is the the argument here? Okay. If you give us command, we're going to fight. Of course, we will. Up, oh, they didn't fight. We just need a king. They got a king. Well, we can't really have this king. This king is not really qualified. Two forty-eight. <clears throat> oh, and then it says Allah gives his sovereignty. Jazak. He gives his sovereignty to whomever he wills. <laughs> what? Jazak. Oh, yeah. oh, I don't know. Okay. Tell you something. Tell you something. She doesn't know. And it's just kind of like... Okay. Because I was... That's why I'm giggling. Okay. So Allah Ta'ala is giving them the, the, the perfect king for them. And then 248. So then the Prophet says to them, Okay, the sign of his kingship is that this chest will come to you. What chest is this? Da-da-da. Uh, the Raiders of the Lost the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. This chest, is that what it is? And a remnant of the family of Musa and the family of Harun left. And there it is. Yeah. Carried by angels. Yeah. So the Raider of the Lost Ark is taken from the Quran. So, so the basic point being that. Uh, they're saying, why should we, why should we believe in him as our king? And so, what's going to happen? He's going to see, he's going to come, or he's going to be delivered with uh, some indications of of the past of the time of Moses, peace be upon him, carried by angels. So now you're going back to America. So you're going from leadership to now you're actually you're asking for more. You're getting it's kind of a repeat of the same, you know, back when, back way back right. when. Now you're asking for miracles, and you're getting miracles, and the more you yeah. deliver it to you, the more you're ending up deeper and deeper if you don't follow through. Exactly, exactly. See the point? That they should have just followed the command, but no, they want someone to lead them. No, that wasn't enough, so now they want something bigger. They're going to be given a miracle. The key point is that they're just not going to fight. So there are some who do go with him. فَلَمَّا فَصَلَ bil بِالْجُنُودِ So... So Talut went with Junud, was essentially a core. So here's the soldiers. Yeah. And he said, Allah is going to test you with this river. And I find this, I always find the story fascinating. So whoever drinks from this is not for me unless they take basically a handful. What's he testing? My discipline, self control. He's testing their discipline, their self control, their obedience, their morale. Because these, so imagine soldiers that are just marching and marching and marching through the desert. Okay. And then they come to a river. Yeah. So all you're allowed to take is a handful of water. Which is also saying that's all you need. And all of them drank too much except for a few. Okay. So they crossed. And they come across Jalut. And his soldiers. And they say, alright, we've got no chance against these people. So this is the crowd of people who actually went. Yeah, yeah the whole the whole population that wanted this didn't get, uh, and it wasn't enough. Wanted this, wanted this, wasn't enough. But now he has a crowd of people who went. So these are the actual active ones. Now the active ones are being tested, and they're saying, "Okay, we got no chance." Good. Sorry. So those who were certain that they were going to face a law. What do they remind themselves? How many times is it that a small party, fi'atin qalilatin, ghalabat fi'atan kathirata? So, okay, kathiratan. 
How many times is it that a small party has, has conquered a, a large party? Because what's the issue that's taking place here? You have people who are looking at the world according to the material of the world, the dunya. And so their king, there's, the king isn't as strong with, uh, as us in terms of dunya, he can't be our king, right? Even come along with miracles, finally that's what it took some people to, 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 to go march. Then when they saw the army, the army is an army of giants, okay, we can't beat them just materially. But those who went with Iman, they said, all right, we're going to do it. It's happened before. If Allah wills, it's happened again. It'll happen again. Meaning, we don't even know if we're going to win. But we know that Allah Ta'ala, if it's going to be up to Allah Ta'ala, if we're going to win. Wallahu ma'as-sabideen. Allah is with those who persevere. Walamma barazu li jalut. So when they forced, when they, uh, 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 would you know the, so when they went forth towards Jalut, Goliath, Wajunudihi and his soldiers, Qalu, they said, so they made a dua, Rabbana, Rabbana af, afrir alayna sabran wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al So the first thing they ask <coughs> is to make patience pour all over us. So here again, sabr is, I mean, I don't like translating this patience even though I do, sabr is the idea of fortitude, that you're persevering forward, as opposed to just mere patience, you're standing still. They're going to keep going forward, they're going to keep going forward, and uh, and keep our foots, or keep our foots, keep our, our, our feet firm in the ground. Foot? Yeah, foot? Yeah. One foot's two feet. So... So what are they asking for when it says keep our feet firmly on the ground? Not Standing, away. grounding. Yeah. yeah. So on the one hand, it's basically give us backbone, right? And don't let us get pushed back. One surna and help us against those who rejected. So they defeated them by the permission of Allah, the iznillah. Wa qatala Dawood. Jaluta. So David killed Goliath. وَأَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَعَلَّمَهُ مِنْ مَا يَشَانَ And Allah gives kingship, here it says prophethood, my prophethood is there, wisdom and knowledge, or and taught him uh, from whatever he will. So there's a, there's a teaching that Allah asked David, would you rather have knowledge or wealth? He says, I'd rather have knowledge. And then from the knowledge, he got wealth. So, right. so what's the lesson here? As we're going through the final phase of this surah, you will be facing these huge, huge obstacles over the, courses of your, over the course of your life. Okay? That will feel like you are this tiny little army against a gigantic army. Okay? And if you look at the world according to your material condition, you're not going to see you're not going to see the world properly. you got to look the world according to your Iman. you got nothing else but your Iman. I mean, obviously you need wealth and all those things for food on the table. But what you need primarily is your Iman to go through all those impossible struggles. And then you're basically throwing yourself to Allah Ta'ala. So, finishing up this ayah, and if it were not for Allah checking some people by means of others, the earth would have been corrupted. This I think we've talked about before. This, there's this philosophy of history that comes from uh, the first time we saw this ayah, that the nations prior to Isa alayhi salam were destroyed by natural events, right? So Pharaoh was, destroyed, was drowned, you have Ad and Thamud, you have Qawm Lut, they're all getting destroyed by natural phenomena. In the case of Isa alayhi salam and the Prophet, peace be upon him, how, what, is the, what is the sunnah of the world become? That when you get corrupted, you get overtaken by someone else. So you may have the privilege of being in a superior position, but then if you start behaving corrupt, then you'll be overtaken by, by other populations that are less corrupt or have some degree of honesty within them. Doesn't mean they're going to be 100% pure. Is that, latter, is that latter part true? In other words, you may be overtaken, but is it necessarily that what came after you is any better? That is uh, a fair clarification, yeah. I mean, the general notion is that your corruption will lead, lead your downfall. That's the important part. Yeah. 
but who's overtaking you may not be less corrupt. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so Tilka Ayatullahi Natluha. So these are the eyes of Allah. We recite them. Alayka al Haq. We alayka bil Haq. We recite them to you with truth. Wa inna kalamin al Mursalin. And you are among the messengers. And so about the messengers, Tilka Rasul. We are now in the third juz of Al Baqarah. So happy, happy, joy, joy time. So <laughs> Spilling things all day, having this drinking problem. Okay. Okay. Got to rehab. Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Last place was I spilled one sprite over myself. Okay. Or you're laughing. Sorry? Or you're laughing. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so this is a laptop cam, cam will fit happen. This completes like a section here. Yes. So, is it safe to like, I mean, would a we'll summary conclusion be that like, you know, struggle, that there's only be, will be a few people who actually yes. engage in an actual, like, action, mm -hmm. and even overcoming odds, and a leader will emerge from that? Is that kind of like a safe lesson to say? So, so the core, the leader will be the one who has the most iman, right? So what's the section we talked about just before this? Uh, divorce, divorce, right? Yeah. So divorce is one type of conflict, right? Here's war, and the repeated issue in divorce is act upright, be upright in your conduct. And we didn't emphasize that as much, but it kept saying, you know, have taqwa of Allah, have taqwa of Allah, have taqwa of Allah. In this section, we're saying it's your material. Oh, that was cool. It's amazing. It's just like, shh. Yeah. A look of pure joy on your face. Yeah, that was pretty amazing, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There was a time. So, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, um, so this section, the, the central theme is that if you are, uh, you're going to be faced with these horrendous struggles, which might be physical battle or just whatever you're going through in life, and your attachment to a material outlook is not going to save you. The only thing that can save you is your iman. And the rest of the surah, except for a few references, are now going to be speaking about uh, your relationship between Iman and giving loans, giving charity, as well as, well, giving charity and giving loans. So you can see a lot of conversation about charity. So, raise your hand. Processing. Well, I, I missed the last two, so I'm trying to just understand how this surah, it seems like almost a moment to step back from you know the regulatory rules in this part of the surah, and I'll just sort of interject this huh? little anecdote. And well, that ties to the rest. I would I would suggest looking at what's tying everything together. Yeah. Almost as primary, the rules, um, the, the specific topics being discussed are just uh, in the thread to make the, the the key point. So yeah, we had rules on estate, rules on divorce, rules on, on or this uh, this lesson on war. The common issue is that when you're faced with struggle and conflict, um, or another way to think about it, when you're faced with dhulum, right, the experience of divorce is literally a dhulum. Uh, the experience of divorce is worse than, you know, mourning over uh, someone who's passed away. And war is something not unlike that. Right? And, and so the common element is what will sustain you is not going to be anything except for uh, Allah Ta'ala. Yeah, I wonder like uh, how, how people who do not have Iman make it through those big struggles of life. Wait a second. So a couple months ago you were like, I don't understand anything that you're saying here. So now you're beginning to understand things? A little bit. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. Last year. <laughs> 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 uh, it took me three times to try to understand your life. So now, <laughs> now, <laughs> the Kool-Aid taste is funny coming. I'm a student in the house. Sorry? Active Active student. Student. Oh. <laughs> I don't think she's been logged on the website yet. <laughs> <laughs> she I don't think I'd be there. It's like on the wave. <laughs> Show, I almost like the, the, the way the way you have like maybe I should just volunteer to take over one week for when you were supposed to do it because he's obviously a little preoccupied. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs>
Okay. So speaking of the messengers, you Muhammad are a messenger. And about the messengers, تِلْكَ الرُّسُولُ فَدَّلْنَا بَعْدُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْدٍ So the messengers, we cause, we cause some of them to exceed over others. Think back to all the way at the end of this surah. Technically we haven't really gotten there, but, we, but you're all familiar with this. At the very end of the surah, it says, we believe in all the messengers, we don't make any distinction between them. What does that mean? If this ayah is saying we excel some over the others. Is that ayah referencing the message? Yeah. So we make no distinction between them in deen, that they all have the same message in deen. But there are statuses of prophets, peace be upon them. At the top of that, the prophet food chain is the prophet, peace be upon them. Who be next? The people who receive the book. The book. So which prophets? And people also put Nuh and Islam there too. Uh, as like the, the super prophets. Mm. And so yeah, here Allah Ta'ala exalts some above others. What a fact. Is it okay when people say like, oh I have a favorite prophet or something like that? Like, That's odd people say that. I mean, Other than Prophet Muhammad, you see what? Yeah, yeah, no, they say like after him. Be like, I like Zulki you know. <laughs> <laughs> But like, peace be upon him. Uh, no, but like I have friends who say like, oh, I want to meet like if you know in history if I could meet anyone I'd meet like this prophet and this prophet after Prophet That's yeah, why sure. you can have mm-hmm. like. Babies. I don't I don't know what the big deal is. I just think it's curious. <laughs> okay, who, who, other than Prophet Muhammad peace who would you guys like to meet? Ibrahim Islam, Ibrahim Islam, yeah. Yusuf. Yeah, you probably want to meet Yusuf. Yusuf. Yeah. 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 I think everyone would want to meet, like, Jesus, Isa. Yeah, Jesus would be pretty cool to meet. You know, yeah, so it's like, like, like far. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And then, like, Musa, because yeah, he's like worldly, you know, like, like, you like leader, the like, consummate leader. Mm-hmm. Which Sahabas would you guys want to meet? Omar. Of course. Oh that's, yeah. easy. That's, right? all, that's easy. That's easy. <laughs> that's easy. Yeah, everybody always. Been, been, I'd oh, like to be scared of him, though, but, like, yeah. Omar oh, Khadija. Khadija? Yeah. Most, must have been Sup? there. If I want to go a little bit off this, because I want to know, <laughs> I want to know what what made him the one person that was worth like being That's pretty com- cool. community. No, no, the prophet said, "I'm going to send one person to give dawah to the entire city mm. of Medina, and it's him." <laughs> yeah. And like, what? <laughs> so that was, 